Hey everybody, Sully Man. So getting into where we left off, um, now we're going to be talking about uh, objects and their stacking order, as well as grouping them and making multiple selections. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. I'm going to go over some of the initial steps in previous videos. So we're going to go ahead and create a new document. I'm going to File, New. I'm going to leave everything default, but just to kind of breeze over this real quick, remember profile you can set depending on the industry that you're working in, whether it's going to be web, print, devices, video film, so forth, so on. You can select the amount of artboards you want to use. We're going to keep it uh, default at one. Uh, we're going to keep the size letter, but these are your presets you can choose from or plug in the size you want. Change the uh, units of measurement if you want and the orientation from portrait to uh, landscape. Bleeds, uh, you can work with your advanced options or not, or you can hide them. Uh, I'm going to leave everything default, hit OK. So it creates our new document. Another cool thing you can actually do um, when you're working, I just want you to know this white area that you're looking at, that's the document. This is actually the live canvas area. So um, this gray area is kind of the way I like to think of it. Think of it like a drafting table. And this piece of paper, that's the document that you, you want all your live artwork in. Out here you can do all your, you know, uh, cutting and pasting and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a working area, but this is, this is the live canvas. Um, so if you got, get tired of kind of seeing this and want to turn it off, you can actually go to view and you can hide artboards. So you can just work in nice clear white space if you want to. But if you don't want to and you're comfortable with having the uh, <coughs> designated space, go ahead and click back into show artboards. Um, you can do the uh, print tiling and all that stuff, but yeah, this is this is the view uh, menu. Just kind of once and over things that we've already gone over. Go ahead and you know test them as you go. Remember, practice makes perfect. I can't say that enough. Um, make mistakes, get in there, be brave. Just start messing with things. The more you do, the better you're going to know the software. Uh, okay, so let's get back into it. So we've created objects in the last video. So I'm going to go ahead and create uh, a few objects. I'm going to go and let's see. We're going to create a yellow square with a uh, black stroke and then stretch it out and I want it square so I'm going to hold shift and make it perfect and release so there's our square let's go ahead and boost the stroke up so there's our square let's go ahead and uh, let's make uh, an ellipse and I'm not going to make this perfect circle let's go ahead and this one's yellow I'm going to click on the fill and then I'm going to change the color let's go with red uh, let's click on the stroke and let's change the stroke. Let's give that one like a green stroke. Uh, again, this I'm not, this doesn't really matter. I'm just kind of being pretty random about this. Just get practicing, you know. So uh, let's go ahead and do um, a blue stroke and a light blue fill star. Okay, this one's a summer. So let's go ahead and use our up and down. I want a traditional looking star, so I'm going to keep knocking the down arrow so that's the, the amount of sides I need now I'm going to hold control so I can uh, stretch it out and there's our nice star um, I can move it around with my selection tool and I can use the bounding box to shrink it so let's go ahead and do that uh, there's a star and let's do like a, let's have some fun with a spiral all right you know what let's use the pen tool I'm going to create a kind of random shape I'm going to go with a green light green fill and let's click on our stroke and do a dark green stroke. And let's just be random. Use the click and hold and bend to create a nice bezier to our path. Keep moving it around. And then I'm going to go back to this the, the original anchor point to close the shape. And here's our custom shape. So yeah, we've definitely created some cool little shapes here. Pretty little colors. So let's get into to stacking order. So these shapes are actually arranged in a specific way. So, like some of these, this object was the last one we worked on. So this is actually going to be on the top of the stack. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Click, and I'm going to move it over this. And if you see, it's actually over that object. Let's move it over the star and these two, and you'll see that it actually is. All three of the objects, it's on top. This was the last one, so it's on top of the stack. So you can imagine this was the first one we worked on, so it's probably on the bottom of the stack. Let's go ahead and throw these in and show you the stacking order. So in the order that we worked on them is their stacking order. And we can arrange that however we want. And how do you do that, you ask? Well, say, say let's, let's give you a, for instance, a situation. So say you've done some artwork. Here's the artwork. You know, it's, it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. 
but you need to move one of these objects in stacking order. So what you would do is say this this uh, red circle with the uh, green stroke you need to move up. What you would do is since we're dealing with objects, we're going to go over to our object menu and we want to arrange them. So right up here, these are going to be the two areas for arranging and transforming shapes, whether we're flipping them, rotating them, scaling them. Uh, but we're, we're working with arrange because we want to bring things to the front or send them to the back and this is where you would find it, arrange. So there's two extremes, bring to the front and send to the back. So bring to the front will bring it to the foremost front, send to the back will bring it all the way to the back. And then you have your incremental stuff which is bring forward one step and send backwards one step. So let's go ahead and do the extreme first. So we'll bring this red circle all the way to the front by bring to front. And it does exactly what we want it to. And you see if I move it around, it's in front of everything. Let's go ahead and uh, object arrange it. Let's send it to the back, all the way to the back. And it does exactly that. So you can see this was the first, the, the yellow square was the first one we worked on, which should be the bottom. But now that we custom arranged it, we have the red circle all the way to the back. So that's, that's kind of stacking order. And, and uh, I highly suggest when you're within a menu, you'll see these, you know, shift control, uh, close bracket or open bracket, and all sorts of little hints here. They're actually teaching you the hotkeys, the shortcut keys. I can't hit this home, uh, you know, hard enough. You really, really need to start uh, using these and remembering these. If you if you want to grab a post-it note and, and post it on your monitor and write down the ones that you see yourself using a lot, do that. You know, mark them down. Um, go through the menu and just start listing them down, you know, but uh, I would definitely, as you're progressing, note down the actions that you're doing most. Like if you, you start arranging things to the front and back a lot, get to know it. But these ones I use actually a lot. I would highly su suggest getting to, to remember these. So control, open bracket, and close bracket are going to be your incremental steps. So instead of bringing this all the way to the back, or I'm going to use the shortcut key all the way to the front, we can do it step by step and I'll show you. So we're going to go to object arrange and we're going to bring backward one step. So if you see it, it wedged it between the custom shape, the green custom shape and the blue star. It's actually between those two. Let's go ahead and do it again. Let's bring it back even further. So this time it should be arranged between the yellow square and the blue star. Send backward. And it did. Now you can see it's actually wedged between those two objects. Uh, and you can bring it forward doing the same thing. Object, arrange, bring forward. You know, so th those are things that you definitely need to know, stacking order. Um, so get to know them quick and get to know the hotkeys. So now let's, let's hop into grouping and why you would want grouping. So say you're in a situation, you've created this artwork, um, and there's two things that you need to keep together. Let's say this is somebody's logo. I'm going to go ahead and type some text out. Logo text. This is Joe Schmo's logo. He loves it and it needs to stay like this. So as you can see, I can click and highlight all three objects and move them around and I can keep his logo together. Cool. So we'll, we'll place it like here, down behind this object. I mean, obviously you wouldn't want to hide somebody's logo, but just say, you, th th this is just the uh, hypothetical. So we need to move it again. You'd have to go like this and say it got to a point where you can't see an object. You know, you'd have to click this. You can't, you know, you can't highlight the three anymore because now you're selecting everything, but you need to move them out of the way. There's a couple ways you can do that. You could do the multiple selection, which is click an object, hold down shift, Click the second one or the third one, however many that you need to select, and then move them again. Uh, but there's a there's a safeguard, if you will, to that as well, and that's grouping. So you can actually click and then hold shift and click the second object. And once you get all the objects selected, you can actually go to object, and then in this section, this is all your grouping and ungrouping. You can group those objects, and if you notice, it brought them together, it brought them into a group. It, it uh, arranged them, brought them to the front, it grouped them, so now they're grouped together, and if you notice, I'm going to deselect, but I'm just, I just want to select the star. 
But if you notice, I've clicked and it selected everything because they're all grouped. So when you run into that issue later and you're like, oh, I can't move, I can't move that one thing, guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to go to object and actually ungroup to be able to move it. So say we needed to fix the logo a little bit. The star was supposed to be in the middle. There, now we have it. We can go back, object, group them so we can easily move them later behind things. And then if we need to arrange them back, go to arrange and send backward if you want to or send all the way to the back by going to arrange and send all the way to the back. So that in essence is you know, the stacking order and being able to arrange them to the front or back and grouping things together and they're fairly simple concepts. Nothing, uh, you know, it's nothing, nothing magical, uh, not hard to grasp. Um, so yeah, if, you, if you've got a couple objects you need to keep together and you're moving them around all the time, remember go to object and group. If you don't want them together, ungroup them. That way then you can click the star and move it wherever you need to move it. Um, but that's uh, the grouping and ungrouping along with stacking order. So I hope you, I hope you learned something today. Um, and uh, the next video that we'll be working on is going to be with the Pathfinder. And that's uh, merging shapes together, creating new shapes, or subtracting shapes from each other and creating new shapes. Uh, so again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.